Hello and welcome back to the Join Dota League Season 4 here on Hefwa TV. Yeah, so I'm Grendis V and hopefully I'll be joined by Mike Laura sometime in the near future. So there has been quite a bit of a, um, I don't Die know, Charlie Foxtrot, if you will, um, during the streaming session because Mike Loris has had some PC issues, especially uh, considering Radiance his audio card and what have you. So Skype wasn't working and then OBS wasn't working and it's a whole mess. So he's going to go for a full restart and I'll just take the stream until he does come back and hopefully that is shortly. As for now, Denial Esports going to open things up with the Brewmaster and Night Stalker ban of all things. A hero that was really, really heavily buffed in the last patch. A lot of uh, teams just don't want to play against him, especially with that um, reduced vision of wards and all structures, with vision Ten being so crucial for taking team fights in the current patch. They'll open things up with a very, fairly seconds. standard Ogmajai and Tidehunter opener, and Donkey Dodo are going to go ahead and pick themselves up a Vengeful Reserve Spirit. Time. If we are just going to stick with the um, 6.82 meta, a puck would not surprise me in the slightest for Donkey Dota, but then again, neither would a Jakiro, although both Radiant slightly Diana. hit in their uh, most popular skill builds in the Liquid Fire, as well as the Wave of Terror Max, are both still incredibly strong in their own right, no. offering some nice mix of pushing power as well as uh, damage Diana's through both ban. of them. Good mix of physical and magical damage as well. How they're going to be laying is still yet to be seen, presumed... Um, Support Vengeful Spirit Radiant's and uh, Farming Jakiro until we see otherwise, but could very well be our supporting duo. Denial Esports will go ahead and ban the Draw Ranger, as that would be a pretty crucial um, bit of damage for Donkey Dodo to work with, combining well with the Jakiro as well as the Vengeful Spirit, Ten just mowing down those to towers go. as fast as possible and getting that snowball rolling. Could be very scary. Five that is seconds. something that Denial um, are quite capable of running themselves and do respect. As far as what Denial Reserve Esports time. are going to pick up for themselves, it's still yet to be seen. Um, could be a whole lot of things. <laughs> Very well. Well, thanks for sticking around inside the chat either way. Ancient Apparition is going to be banned out Diana's by Donkey Dodo. Ban. As well as the Destructor previously taken out. Would have been a really scary teamfight combination to be sure. With Ravage as well as Static Storm Kinetic Field on top of it. TB now banned Dyer's out big. by Denial Esports. Really scared of Donkey Dodo's ability to push down towers. Even though uh, Terra Blade's illusions were nerfed pretty heavily in the last patch. With that 25% reduced damage to structures. He's still a force to be reckoned with. And you can't underestimate his pushing potential even with that reduced damage. 75% of a truckload of damage still hurts quite a bit. Denial Esports going to show their hand with this next pickup, but honestly, it could be anything. Although their lanes are Sky pretty set in stone, there's not really Radiant's anything pit. crazy that um, they need to do with these two heroes. They can go into a lot of different directions, and honestly, Skyrath Mage doesn't change that in the slightest. Although, as a Jewity got nerfed, um, honestly, it's a very negligible change, if anything at all, to Skyrath Mage. Going to be a lot of new damage coming out from them, especially if you get multicasts involved there. And a pretty potent combination at that. You can gank the Tidehunter's lane pretty easily if he has a point and gush skilled up, but even if he doesn't Damn and you don't roam to towards his lane, he is very self-sufficient. Donkey Dodo. Dyer's could go for a bit. clockwork. A very interesting pickup up against the Skyrath Mage. It works well, as well as also has its flaws up against the Skyrath. If you're going onto the Skyrath Mage himself, it's very easy to burst him down, especially if a blade mail is involved. But then again, if you cogs yourself in with like the Ogre Magi, for um, instance, you could just get a Mystic Flare on top of your head and be completely burst down. Right now, Denial Esports are lacking a Ten decent amount of go. wave clear, so Donkey Dodo could go all in into a pushing style lineup Five if seconds. they so choose to do so. Like and throw Broodmother all available if they want to go for that Reserve type of time. play. Denial still haven't really shown their hand, as I've already said. The roaming potential is nice from the Ogre Magi and the Scarf Mage, but they're also more than capable of just protecting somebody's farm. It's more or less going to be those last two picks that kind of show Denial Esports hand in their mid farming and safe lane farming heroes. It should take quite a bit of time before we actually get Mike Loris back on the line. He has to do a full computer restart. Usually that fixes things, but um, yeah, who knows. What actually goes on there? 24 hours, it seems. His computer is just on a self-destruct cycle, Mira. if you will. It's going to be a Mirana for Denial Esports. Another Radiant's kind of lukewarm pick. hero. Right now, their lineup really doesn't offer itself towards any major direction. It's good at what it does, but then again, it's not great at what it does. It's moderate as far as its power potential. And honestly, I like Donkey Dodo's lineup more just because it's... More focused. I don't know. Right now, they have a lot of good pickoff potential, and the defensive 
capabilities of a swap up against the Skyroth Mage, a Tidehunter, and Dan's even the Arrow from Garana is wonderful, and I think it works pretty nicely for them. And they have a lot Five more seconds. ability to move around. Up until the Marana, I'm okay with the Nile Esports plan. Now Donkey Dodo, nice going to go man. full hog with a Naga Siren. At this point, I don't think there's any reason to go for anything but a core Naga Siren. Denial Esports just don't have the tools to clear off these heroes, and actually, Radiant they're the ones man. to ban out the Lion. Very interesting. Usually picked up as a hero to sort of counter the Naga Siren by taking out our illusions with the Mana Drain, as well as with the axe uh, just a nice instant way to take those out even though it would have fit very well into their Ten lineup would donkey of dota or would donkey dota have gone for it either way i'm tempted to think that that's a misclick i'd love to learn Dyer's their reasoning pick. for it because it looks like we're still missing a core for donkey dota unless they are just going to run with that core hero and put as much pressure as possible Strong to make space spirit. for this naga siren denial esports going to last pick up pit. themselves up a storm spirit relying very heavily on Getting these good lanes as well as set up for those arrows early on. With the Fire Blast and Concussive Shot, definitely can work out for them, but Denial, if they don't get the snowball rolling and they play a slow game, Naga Siren is going to be well inside her element. And it's going to have a grand time. There's not really much else to talk about it. Well, for now, Donkey Dota are going to be considering their last Damn pick, and they will go. be showing us what they actually want to go for. Right now, a nice defensive Five support seconds. could be pretty solid for them, or just anything with an instant disable. Honestly, I'd like to see a Rubik here. He's not Preserve the greatest time. of supports, but just having that instant lift up against the Storm Spirit would be really useful for them to follow up with the Magic Missile Ice Path combination. And then just having the chance of stealing a Ravage, Fire Blast, there's a lot of good spells at his disposal. And if you get your hands on it, and you can connect those up, an arrow is also nice to have in your disposal. Outside of that, the Disruptor... Was banned out by them, so that's not going to be on the table. Could have been a decent pickup, honestly, especially considering the Naga Siren setup. There's not really any other great heroes to really benefit from that. Um, Enigma with his Black Hole is available if they want to go for that, but honestly, I think they just get punished too hard by Scarf Mage and Ogre Magi. It's going to be an Invoker last pick for Donkey Dota, giving them a lot of global gank potential with that hookshot into the Cogs and Sunstrike. We still have yet to see how they're actually going to lane this. It looks like Naga Siren is going to be farming. DH played the Timber Saw last game, topping the CS charts as well as more or less functioning as their safe lane farmer, even though he wasn't laned as such. Um, was laned in solo lane versus the Venomancer in the off lane, but yeah, the cards will fall where they may. As for Denial Esports, um, their player assignments are a little bit more standard, or at least should be. I don't think they're going to go for anything out of the ordinary, so it looks like we are going to be seeing a Radiant Snaga Siren game, potentially another late, late game. Either way... Oh, my goodness. Looks like our other streams are not doing too well either. We have Damn a 15-minute pause go. ongoing. Um, yeah, it's, it's not great. Okay, so for now, we're just waiting for everybody to select their heroes. Are they actually in this game? I'm not sure. It shouldn't take this long. Um... Apparently they're AFK or something. At least their captains were here. I suppose I can introduce our Radiant lineup. It is going to be Donkey Dodo. Um, the Tier 2 team that are playing in these standoffs, they did play second in their group underneath Balkan Bears, um, but really only lost to them consistently, so we'll just have to see how they play out up against Denial, and honestly they impressed me, or maybe Denial are just faltering. A combination of both is not at all unlikely. Lucian is going to be playing on that Vengeful Spirit, DH on that Naga Siren. Aki on the Jakiro, Inyasha on the Invoker, and Masakari. Oh my goodness, I'm sure I'm butchering that, but he's going to be playing on the Clockwork. For Denial, we only have two loaded in, so there's not really much to talk about. Cryo J going to be playing on the Scarath Mage, Detax on the Ogre Magi. Yeah, that's that's about it. <laughs> we'll have yet to see who's actually going to be picking up those last two heroes. It is Denial running with two stand-ins, so uh, as we saw last game, Leech Commander played by fucking Mad. He generally doesn't play um, mid roll for the What's team. What's with all so, the scribbling? Uh, we'll just have to see. Right now, some beautiful phallic drawings on the map. That's actually quite impressive. Not sure I could do that in the short amount of time allotted. That was very detailed for a map drawing. So props to Aki, you can draw a dick. Well, I, I don't have anything to follow that up, my goodness. Is he going to, like, continue to grace us with beautiful drawings? I'm just going to try to figure out what is going on here. <laughs> I don't even know. Well... Huh. 
Looks like we have everybody from Denial loaded into the game, so that's nice. I suppose I can introduce them. It's going to be fucking mad. Playing on the Storm Spirit, Detax on the Ogre Giant, Innocent on the Tide Hunter, Paris on the Marana, and Cryojay on the Scarth Mage. Hopefully we don't have any more holdups, and well, hopefully for us it's not going to be a 2-0 for Denial, but I mean, after that long game, it was a pretty darn good one, so I mean, that's about all you can hope. Mike Loris is reconnected into the game, so maybe, just maybe, we can get him onto the line. We waited for you, Mike Loris. Are you here? Yes. Excellent. Okay. I don't know why. I have no idea. But, yeah. We're, we're here now. And it looks like we are... I'm just in time. Yeah, we, we actually just waited for you. We paused and all the players were getting a drink or something. And you had just enough time to restart. So, we're in the game. And it's in the bag. <laughs> Alright, so... <clears throat> Denial taking game one after a very, very close game. And... Well, we have ourselves some laning situations here from DD. We got Massacary as the Clockwork is going to be heading down towards the bottom lane. Inuyasha's Invoker is going to be handling the mid lane. Illusionist supporting as the Venge along with Aki on the Jakiro and DH on the Naga Siren. Looks like it's an offensive trial lane with Naga Siren. You don't see that every day. Maybe just sniffing out the Denial aren't going with the standard lanes. Just securing as much farm as they can for the Naga right now. We have Marana just up here. Paris potentially supported. By the Scarath Mage, but that's about it. Ogre made his way all the way down towards bottom to place a deep ward. Hmm, so for Denial, it looks like it might be dual go. lanes for a little bit, though. I don't really expect Detax to stay down on this bottom lane. He has Boots first as Ogre, which does indicate he wants to roam around aggressively. And Clockwork versus Tide Hunter, it's fine for the Tide. It's not the easiest matchup for him, but it's something that he will be very comfortable in. And as far as this top lane is concerned, this is not really the strongest offensive try lane in the game. Yeah, it really isn't, but it might be enough to kill off fucking mad. They're going to net him down to the ground. They use dual breath first. Fucking mad just doesn't have a way out of this. He's going to get body blocked up by Illusionist and the right click damage. Although not the greatest, might be enough to scare our first blood here. Got a feeling this is gonna be good. Couple more right clicks. He's gonna live at 11 HP. Just needs one more hit. There's a magic missile, and there it is. Fucking mad is down. Illusionist claiming that kill, but here comes back up. Paris and Cryo both gonna gang up on Aki. Gonna make it a one for one. And also Illusionist might be in a little bit of trouble here because there's another arrow cooling down Illusionist. Which way is it going to be? Up the hill? That might be his escape, although the salve is going to be cancelled. Arrow not going to be thrown. Paris just has five more movement speed. That's a two for one. And though Storm Spirit dying is pretty bad, he didn't really lose that much experience because of the timing in which he died. And turning around for two kills, Paris going to get one kill out of that. Overall, not too terrible for Denial. Yeah, I think that's just fine. If you look at the net gold swing, it's actually going to favor them about 120 gold, um, but that is in the pockets of their supports. Whether that's good or not is still yet to be seen, but yeah, I think that's perfectly acceptable for them, maybe even slightly in their favor. DH is going to be farming up towards top, has already gone for that point in net, and farming this lane is going to be very problematic for him whenever Scarth Mage has a man to spam up his arcane bolts. Well, it was going to be problematic for him, pretty much just given the hero situation. Jakiro Venge is okay as far as protecting the Naga Sirens farm, so if this was a defensive tri lane, DD would be sitting pretty. But as an offensive tri lane, they have no access to pulls, or restricted access to pulls, let's say. And they just have to do their best at shutting down Paris. As far as killing off this Marana, she has leap and she has sufficient backup, especially now with Ogre Magi coming all the way from bot. So this is going to be a very tough time. They're going to go for Cryo instead. The softer target for sure, netting him down to the floor. Riptide is there. Cryo's doomed to fall. And that's a kill that they can take. Zero armor, Skyrath Mage, less agility now even. He's going to drop. Yeah, taking more than pure damage with that Riptide minus armor as well, so DD, they're still doing fine in this top lane. Naga Siren's securing a decent amount of farm. Bottom lane, the Tide Hunter and Clockwork are just going at each other's throats. Whenever they're able to isolate each other, get that anchor smash damage off. Venge is going to be roaming towards the two minute rune spawn. It's going to be a haste rune for Illusionist. Haste Adventural Spirit might be able to set up even on the Storm Spirit in mid, as fucking mad is only level 3 in a bit. But the Invoker, he's gonna cold snap, but that's about all that he can do. The Magic Missile didn't even come out. Mm, the Invoker is also opening up with Blades of Attack plus Quast Rune, so this does look like it's going to be a Wex build for Inuyasha. Um, that's not too terrible, though I do think they could have gotten away with Exhort. Burning mana off of Denial's heroes is going to be a pretty nice way of shutting them down. I don't know the chances of them actually landing an EMP onto a Storm Spirit, but if you do somehow, then he's just so unhappy. 
I would have liked to see Exhort a little bit better just to combo with the Clockwork. The Sun Strikes into Hookshot Ganks are definitely no joke. Up and top, both teams posturing pretty aggressively, and this Nagasarn has slowed down a little bit. Illusionist caught out in the trees, will be able to eat his way through. The arrow flies through wide towards the right, and isn't going to connect onto anything. And the turnaround potential for DD is certainly there. The amount of sustained damage they could put out just with the minus armor of Vengeful Spirit, plus Liquid Fire, plus Riptide. Like, they have quite a bit of minus armor. Uh, it's not to be very careful about how far they choose to pursue out these fights, because Marana, she's gone for two points in arrow. This is not really the build I would expect a Marana to go for in this type of laning situation. If you're up against three heroes, you generally want Starstorm because it could hit three heroes. Yeah, and also they don't have the greatest of setup for arrow. They have Fire Blast, but that's not even up for DTAX just yet. They're banking a lot on those arrow ganks, and it doesn't feel like they want to stick around this lane too much, but where's the opening that can actually roam? Got Strut lands into Aki, and DH going to eat an Ignite, but it doesn't look like they have the damage to get either of these kills. Just going to be traded blows either side. It's only a level 1 Ogre Magi still, because he had to roam all the way from the bottom lane. Now hits level 2, so the setup for arrow is now there, but still, it's not exactly the best setup in the world, and you know, going for these heroes, you might not even get the kill, even if you land the arrow, so it's... Uh, going to be Ogre Magi, Scarath Mage, still with the ability to roam, and they're going to try their luck in the mid lane in Yasha. Maybe they'll have ball lightning, or maybe they're just not going to go for the mid lane at all. It's going to be top lane when they set their sights. DH, I think if this arrow lands, she's just dead. And with Fire Blast and Ignite, they, well, they don't even need Ignite to set that up. DH is dead, or he should be dead. He got some shot to secure the kill. Scarath Mage notches that one under his belt. Yeah, Naga Siren, just a little too comfortable there without supports. If the arrow does connect, even with the completed poor man's shield and just the raw base armor that Naga Siren has, still does fall pretty quickly to his magic nuke. Alright, so that's going to be yet another kill for Denial up towards top. And Naga Siren without any supports really has to be so, so careful. It looks like they're going to switch things up a little bit. DD are going to put Massacre's Clockwork up on the top lane, swap the Naga Siren down towards bottom. I mean, it's going to be slightly better for the Naga Siren, but she's going up against a level 5 Tidehunter already. Like, if the Naga Siren is left alone at all in this lane, she will just get Anchor Smash to hell and back. Yeah, on even footing, I'd say that that lane is probably slightly favored in the Tidehunter. It's very even at the very least, and innocent just with the raw levels advantage, as you said. It's going to be problematic for the Naga Siren, especially once Ravage comes out. If they have a roam from a storm getting like an invis or a haste, double damage, any beneficial rune to gank with. The Naga Siren might just fall. She's miles away from getting her song up. Yeah, and the Storm Spirit, if he does find that one of those runes, then, well, first of all, they will spot it out. The Observer Ward's still alive for a little bit more time, so no matter what, DD are more or less gank-proof from fucking mad, but even if that doesn't happen, the fact that Tidehunter can sit in the lane comfortably versus this, for right now, dual lane, soon to be, I think, defensive tri-lane, means that he's going to be very happy in this lane. He has Bottle, he has Stick, and soon he's going to have a Ravage, so... It's not completely out of the question to see Tidehunter just, you know, get poked around a little bit too much and suddenly he's really pissed off, so he pops a Ravage, turn things around. DD, this is, I think, what they should have done from level one. I mean, the offensive tri lane worked okay. It got them a kill on the Scarath Mage, but that's about it. Yeah, I do think that they would have gotten a lot more, especially on these two supports. Jakiro could have zoned out the Tidehunter pretty effectively with Liquid Fire um, and what have you. Vengeful Spirit could have gotten a lot more out of the pools. Even being involved in two kills, still just at level two and a half. DD, it feels like they're kind of falling behind, especially in the CS of the Naga Siren, where Denial are just able to get a little bit of an edge out of all of these lanes. And also Clockwork, he doesn't have the build that he really wants to. If Denial really want to stick up with his tri lane up on top, then the Clockwork's build should be more along the lines of like one two of uh, one one three in Rocket Flare, because he oh, will not be able to use out. Battery Salt well versus a Marana. So if they do make this lane switch, and it looks like they might, then Clockwork, though he is close to level 6 himself, is going to really struggle to make that work. But it doesn't look like it's going to be a complete lane swap right now. Venge is still up on top lane. That's not a place where she really would like to be. And she's going to get a little bit of help from Clockwork. Not quite level 6, so it's going to be a very slow lane swap. But it looks like it will happen in the end. But you know, as fast as this is happening, Denial, they're going to smoke up and they might run into the Invoker, they might run into Venge. Either way, they have a kill opportunity on their hands because Storm has Ball Lightning. Yeah, and honestly, I don't think DD have a kill potential in return. With the zip away from the Storm Story, you should be able to disjoint the Magic Missile 90% of the time. 
And, well, let's see how aggressive Inyasha is going to get. And, oh, I think he just crossed the line. He really crossed the line. Going to get pulled back by fucking Mad Ignited up. Fire Blast is going to be destroyed by a tornado. He goes invis, but the dust coming out from the uh, Skyrath Mage is going to put an end to the Invoker's life very easily. Yeah, the tornado is pretty much as good as it gets, and that was pretty much everything the Invoker could have done to escape. He did do it, and everything landed properly, but it just was not enough. When you're in that bad of a situation, there's not much you could really do. Down towards the bottom lane, Innocent, he's taking the 2v1 fight, Jakiro and Naga Siren versus the Tidehunter, who's now level 6. Ravage pop into Anchor Smash won't outright get him a kill, but if they get a little bit too close for a little bit too much, then Innocent... Okay, this is a kill opportunity for Innocent right now. He's netted to the floor, but he's going to turn around with the Ravage, Anchor Smash, DH. Not quite dead just yet, Innocent. Now hitting level 7, though, he has another Anchor Smash, and losing this, going to run right past the Tidehunter, and you're not supposed to be running like this from a solo offlane Tide. But they really don't have any other options. Tide, unfortunately for him, just short of getting any of those kills. But, man, he just messed up the entirety of this DD bottom lane. Yeah, even though he doesn't get any kills, it's going to send Naga Siren all the way back to base. In fact, the whole tri lane all the way back to base. So, even though it's not a traditional Ravage for a kill trade that you're looking for, I think that's still worth it for him. Trouble brewing. Yeah, he's getting a lot more space down in this bottom lane. He's making sure that the Naga Siren is not farming right now. And a Naga Siren that's not farming is... Well, not really the most impressive hero really in the game, and by the time they actually get right back now. there, Tidehunter, yeah, you'll have to worry about the harass for a little bit, but once he has Ravage again, then there's another opportunity for him, and DD, they're getting absolutely nothing, whereas Tidehunter is getting something. It may not be the Blink Dagger that he really wants, just because he doesn't have that much time, but he's getting closer to it, and right now, Denial, they're pretty much firing off on all cylinders, whereas DD, their mid lane's doing okay, but that's about it. Yeah, honestly, this Invoker really needs to carry a lot of weight come to mid-game. He's getting a decent amount of experience, but especially as a Quas Wax Invoker, you can't just split push your way to victory. You need to look for those engagements and try to find the kills. Storm Spirit uh, was sent all the way back to base, and fucking bad is going to get a full refill. Ogre is picking up the slack in the meantime, so nothing is really lost um, for denial across the map. And I do like that they make these smooth rotations to make sure that no lane is left empty for too long. Well, right now, Innocent, he's off the lane because he's going to stack up some Ancients. Level 3 Kraken Shell, level 4 Anchor Smash, and you can clear those Ancients off pretty easily. And also, it's worth noting, DD, they do have their Clockwork now at level 6, so it's potentially their turn to get some aggression going. The problem is, Wex Invoker doesn't really play that well with Clockwork. You could land an EMP, but that's about it. Your Tornado probably going to do more hurt than help. So, uh, as far as getting kills on whoever's in the mid lane, probably not going to happen. It's more likely that someone dies down towards the bottom with Innocent. He does not have a point of gush, but he doesn't really care. He's going to go right up to Illusionist, Anchor Smash, the Venge, all the way down to half HP. Here comes Inuyasha, going to land EMP after the hookshot lands on his D-Tax. EMP will explode, killing off the Ogre Magi. Marana here as well, really should not be here. Star Storm going to fly, put a little bit of damage onto Mass Carry, but everyone will back off. Just a clean kill for DD as they bring pretty much their whole team down to the bottom lane. Yeah, it's going to be one kill for them, but in the meantime, Scarf Mage is farming up towards top. It's... A nice kill for sure. Tidehunter now with Ravage up is going to be netted down to the ground. Innocent going to let it fly and now going in for the Anchor Smash onto DH. If he had just one point in the gush, he might have even been able to get that kill. That one I don't think is super worth Radiant's it, but top again, Nagasar not really farming during this time. And can't your face arrow, ooh, just whizzing the tail feathers of Abby, but not going to be enough. Well, he's got to be really careful right now because they know that the Marana is here. They don't know that the Ogre Magi is here as well. And Paris is going to bypass the illusion, CDH, jump forward. Look for that Star Storm, but we'll lose Vision Arrow. Will be held. If he threw it out, Paris would have gotten that to connect. I don't know if that would have been a kill. There's the arrow. That's going to give Vision for a couple more right clicks. No mana for Star Storm, though. 15 HP. The Nog is alive. And now here comes the Invoker. This is not a fight that Denial can take any longer. The EMP is going to drain the Ogre Magi out completely. Actually, not completely, but he's still going to be beaten down slowly but surely. He's tanky, but I don't think it's going to do it. Tornado will crater him. In the meantime, Scarf Mage also goes down up towards the top lane. Looks like that was just a hook shot kill. And Denial just falling so short of killing off this Naga Siren. That's sometimes just the way it goes. Paris miscounting his mana, it seems. Radiant mid Yeah, poor man's shield out. value as well. Without that, Naga Siren's dead, almost for sure. And Yasha, it's going to be an Orchid build for this Invoker. No big surprises there. And it's going to give us a nice point of comparison between him and the Storm Spirit. As both of them are presumably going for the same item build. DD, they come out with a lot more than they probably should have, and that's nice for them, keeping themselves in this game. It's a 3,000 advantage towards Denial, and both experience and the gold, but it is starting to be stemmed down by them. This Clockwork has managed to find himself two kills with the hookshots, although not as directly in that first fight, is now picking up a decent amount of steam, maxed out into the Battery Assault, can't feasibly look for solo pickoffs 
especially on the Ogre and Scarf Mage. And also, we gotta remember, even though Tidehunter is doing a lot of damage to the enemy side, he's burned Ravage twice, and he hasn't gotten a single kill off of it. That's a big cooldown, and if you're not actually getting a lot done with it, then as nice as it is to force the enemy back to base, it's not going to be enough, as top lane Cryo is going to get put into a cage with Mass Carry. Battery Assault, they split between a couple of creeps. Cryo's going to get a little bit more time because of that. Here comes fucking Mad, going to try to go for Mass Carry. I don't think he has enough. The Battery Assault's still ticking. Fucking Mad has to make a quick retreat. Now all the way out of mana up on this top lane. He cannot afford to stay here for much longer. He doesn't even have a bottle. I don't know where he teleported from, but it certainly was not the base. Yeah, lucky mad. I'm actually surprised he wasn't able to get off that bolt. I didn't know the battery assault was fast enough to uh, cancel that animation, but apparently it is. Even if it did pull him back, I don't think getting that kill is really on the table for him. It just would have been too risky. Down in bottom, they're collapsing onto DH. He's going to be able to get the song off. Short arrow is only getting stunned for a split second, and it does have the ravage, so they need to be careful about how they deal with this Tidehunter. He is kind of a grenade here. They will burst him down quickly enough, bounce him back with the cogs, and bring him down under the tier 1 tower as Marana makes a clean retreat. Song on cooldown, a lot of TPs, but still DT not only saved their Naga, but gave kill in return. And Denial had a really great laning stage, but it seems like their decisions to go for these aggressive plays or, you know, whatever they're doing, all their plays, they're just being outplayed by DD. They're making all the right rotations. They have pretty much more heroes at the right places at the right times, whereas for Denial, it always seems like they're going in with just two heroes or just one hero, and they're getting punished because of it. They might get a kill on Tajikiro right now, but it's going to be a long jump fucking mad. going to burn most of his mana. He's going to jump twice, in fact. And he still is looking for this Jakiro. That's just not going to happen. Denial, yeah, they're just getting outplayed right now. I don't even know if there's any other way of putting it. They should have had such a better time right now, but one too many misplays, and suddenly they are not looking as great as they were. At least not as great as they should be looking right now. Paris has an invis rune. He's going to look for DH. Arrow's going to fly, which will not hit. Like, it's plays like this is plays like that Deny really can't afford to make. He hook shot in, and Masco is going to trap fucking mad completely out of mana. Storm's going to fall. DTAC's also going to get clipped by that battery assault. He's going to try to fire blast Ignite his way out to freedom, but that's not going to happen. That's two kills. I don't know why you would go that far deep behind a tier one tower without your Tidehunter with Ravage, but Denial just decided to make that call, and it seriously punished them for it. And it might not even be over because the Invoker is at full mana, full health, and he's going to land EMP Tornado onto Cryo, burn most of his mana, chase him down, no cold snap there, Cryo will survive 40, and Yasha Silence is forced to back off, they have to respect this Tidehunter, Denial, they'll assemble all their heroes here, so they could potentially turn this run around, but even if they do, best case scenario, they get a support, and it might be Illusionist, Arrow will be dodged, and Illusionist, there's still no gush in this Tidehunter, really, he just might walk out of here, Illusionist is going to be a-okay. Yeah, honestly, I think there's just one too many misplays coming out from Denial, and that early game advantage is completely gone, but the Storm Spirit does pick off the Naga towards top. Didn't actually see that go down, but fucking Ned finally makes one stick. Well, that's gonna be one more part to his Orchid, at least a little bit more gold towards that item, but compare that to Invoker, he's already holding on to one of those O Stabs, and he's holding on to quite a bit of gold as well. He's been participating a lot more than the Storm Spirit because he has more to contribute. They're going to try to go for Innocent down towards bottom lane, but the Ravage is going to be popped in response. Aki is going to get tagged with an arrow straight after. That's one down. Illusionist will be able to teleport out of this situation, so he'll be fine. And will they actually DD bring a lot of heroes down to this bottom lane? They know that Ravage is down. They know that this is the time to fight. If they land a tornado or a hookshot, that's good. Innocent is now trapped, and he's going to get arrowed for his troubles, Mass Carry, but he doesn't really care. He got the kill for his team, and in fact, got the kill for himself. That's another hookshot kill, 5 0 2 on Clockwork, and Mass Carry just doing work in this game. For sure. Blade Mail already completed here 14 minutes in after quite a large amount of kills going his way. Clockwork is one of those hit or miss. Sometimes lukewarm heroes, but when it's hot, it's very hot, and Mascari is doing quite a good job of it. We're on a deep behind enemy lines, looking for something with this haste stream. Not going to find it. Instead, it's going to be mid, where the sports are DK now. Detax going to take the lesser half of that exchange as he gets Radiant magic missile and ice path down. Lee Ford Paris looking to clean up the Vengeful Spirit, making it a one for one. Have Has to watch out, though. Tornado is available, and it will miss. Radiant. Uh, if that caught Marana, that could have been really bad without any leap, but she will, is going to be fine for now. Denial. Making a one-for-one -one support for support trade over in the mid lane. Not really going to be favoring any particular side in too big of a fashion. But uh, still 11-7 right now. DD holding strong onto this game. Despite being down in CS, they're not going to stop. Battery Assault is going to catch Innocent. 
And with nothing here to absorb the battery assault, there's an arrow. Maybe we'll buy Innocent sometime. Song of Siren is there, fucking mad. Detax gonna that come right into a nap. The and they have to back off right now because there is a Storm Spirit on the other end. Leap forward, plus Bloodlust. Paris looking for something, but he doesn't have an arrow. That's two TPs from Denial, completely down to the two because of that song. Yeah, the Storm Spirit did split push to the top lane. Does have his two Oblivion staffs completed, but fucking mad really Radiant needs to make this work into some serious work. Days. And. It's going to be met by one on the Invoker not too soon after that, and Yasha is farming a little bit slower than the Storm Spirit, but still having a decent Radiant amount of impact. The EMPs on top of the Cogs right are now. really nice to have. Not as great as the EMP Invoker. Either way, Inyasha is going to be pulled back. Storm Spirit looking for the soul kill. Tornado going to completely whip, as is the EMP. Well, it's actually going to drain a decent amount of fucking mad mana, but he'll get an Invis rune on his way out. Secured by DTAC, so Invoker just spotting off a little bit more than he can chew. Alright, so when fucking Mad is going to be winning the Orchid race, and once that happens, getting kills on the Snog of Siren is going to be a lot easier for him. DH is just going to straight up rush that Relic, so he is going to be not the slowest Relic carrier in the world, but he does have to be careful because of how easy it is for Denial to shut him down. As far as Denial's farm, Marana is going for a you know, pretty balanced build, 3 0 2 on that hero, and Paris is Radiant keeping himself alive while at the same time doing some up. serious damage, but he has to be really careful right now because there's a hookshot available. Killing off this Marana though without hard crowd control is going to be really hard, and level one magic missile isn't really Trouble hard enough. Radiant's bottom tower. For sure. Right now, just some posturing coming out from DD and trying to make as much space as possible for that Naga Siren. It is going to be a pretty late Radiance, but um, just the amount of fa um, farm that Naga can accrue is going to make up for the fact that she's not going to get that online fast enough. Looking towards mid, potentially he'd jump onto Inyasha is brewing, but he's going to back off and meets up with the rest of his team. They popped Moonlight Shadow with fucking mad farming the top lane, so DD, I'm assuming they saw that and then they just back off because that's a pretty easy play to make. Uh, so Invoker really was in no trouble of dying there. There's a Blink Dagger on the Tide Hunter with a level 2 Ravage, so he is a pretty dangerous threat right now for Denial to work with him. That might buy them a little bit of space, but DD, even if they do get Blinked upon, even if the Ravage does fly out, they have Clockwork, they have EMP, they have so many answers that they could throw the way of the Tide Hunter, Assuming they don't outright die to a Ravage, the turnaround potential for DD is huge, especially if Naga Siren's there. Song into Disengage is pretty easy. Definitely. They spot out the Storm Spirit while he's farming, but aren't able to do anything about it. After quite a lot of action around the map, it's slowed down for a little bit. Clockwork Hookshot has been on or off of cooldown for quite some time, as DD are just looking to slow down the pace of this game. Denial with the freshly picked up Orchid are going to change that fact, however, looking for a pickup potentially onto DH himself. Instant TP to tower coming out from the Storm Spirit, but the Naga is not without backup. Could it be dangerous? Going to zip forward to the creep wave, blurring some illusions as inside the jungle. They do get the ice path onto two, but Hookshot forward onto Cryo J is getting burned down by the Rock Brush, but not fast enough. The return with the Mystic Flare, the Blade Mail was either just not available or not popped at all. Zip forward by the Storm Spirit on the sidelines. They found themselves DH on the outskirts of this fight. They'll be able to bring it down very easily. As Marana completes a dominating spree, and that's going to be 3 for nil in favor of Denial. Mystic Flare doing some serious work there for the Scarath Mage. Not only getting the kill, but also ensuring his escape. Also, Tidehunter's Ravage. Connecting on to a whole bunch of heroes there, even though for Denial it was kind of a scattered engagement. Uh, that's perfectly fine. They landed a Ravage onto a whole bunch, and this time they actually had follow-up. It was not just Innocent all alone. He actually had teammates there, and Turns out if you actually have teammates, it does make a pretty big difference in this game. So Denial, they take a pretty nice fight. They take a tower as well. They are still in control of all of their tier ones. So it seems like once Denial stop making these misplays, they're actually able to take some really fantastic fights every single time Ravage is up. And well, Innocent, we'll have a four staff soon enough. So those Ravages pretty much guaranteed to land on two, maybe even three heroes every single time. Right now, DH has been severely slowed down just by the amount of times he's died. 1, 3, and 6. It's not a terrible KDA by any means, but it's not being backed up by a huge amount of farm either. Being doubled up in the CS department by the Storm Spirit, DH just hasn't found a home inside this map. And if they kill him once or twice more, he can't not go for the Radiance. There's not really another option for him, but then again, it's just going to be so delayed. The impact of that item isn't going to be as useful as it would in another game. And Yasha, now with this Orchid complete, is going to pop that Ghost Walk. Moving at 455 movement speed, trying to find a pick, but that's just not on the table right now. Four Heroes of Denial are incredibly defensively positioned and all grouped up. The only one alone is Tide Hunter. Not anywhere close, at least for now. 
And then Yasha has to make his retreat. He's going to maybe run into the Skyrath Mage right now who does have Dust. So that could be a potentially bad situation for the Invoker. There's the EMP plus Orchid. There's a Fire Blast though. Multicast as well to bail Cryo out. No, not quite. Orchid is going to take him down innocent. Going to give chase to Inuyasha. Storm Spirit not here. Arrow going to fly. Swap out. We'll keep the Invoker safe and sound. Illusionist, though, still in a little bit of trouble because there's another Fire Blast being armed right now. One, two, multicast with a leap forward from Paris. He gets hookshot immediately. Still will get the kill on the Venture Spirit regardless. Master Carry a little bit late with those cogs. That's going to be a one for one support for support trade once again. In the meantime, bottom lane, fucking mad, trying to go for DH and is just going to fall short, but does force the Nog Siren once again all the way back to her base. Does force out the Song of the Siren usage. Overall, it's fine for Denial to make these types of engagements. Yeah, it really is. Naga Siren still miles away from having that relic in a good game. You'd have had your Radiance running for a minute or two already and would be well on your way towards the Boots of Travel or Yasha, whatever you may be saving up for. They really just need more time, DD, and with the Heroes of Denial, their power of pickoff, it's going to be really hard for them to do so. This Clockwork needs to do a lot of work, as does the Invoker, and after the early game, I was hopeful for this Wex Invoker, but he really hasn't been able to pick up the steam. Yeah, I feel like if he had an exhort based build, he would have been able to help out the Clockwork a lot more. The Clockwork has been, for the most part, doing fine just by you know his own kit. But if he had Sun Strikes, then you know in the fight in the jungle of the Radium, that could have been a very easy kill on the Skyrath Mage. And if you have these Forge Spirits walking around, it would have been a lot more power for the DD side as well. So I think in this game, not too impressed by how the Wex Invoker has been working out. Fucking Madden Inuyasha though, in a little bit of a standoff Orchid race, it's going to be Orchids for Inuyasha, and now with the double damage rune, Yule Scepter will purge that off, but it will set up for an Ice Path. That will be the death of the Storm Spirit. Um, Yule Scepter on Storm Spirit, not the most common item, and it's not going to work out for him this time, because I actually thought that was Jakiro's Yule's, which because it was so perfect for the DD side, but either way, Storm Spirit down, and the crackback from Denial, the response from Denial, pretty much non-existent, innocent, d -tax going to blow smoke up the high ground, but with Illusionist in the front lines, they will be able to wave and figure out exactly what's going on. There's still double damage on the Invoker. They're going to walk right up to the high ground. Cog's going to bump two of them back. Blink forward for a Ravage. This time, there's absolutely no follow-up in Paris. He's pretty much getting soloed by the Invoker. The Orchid will not kill off the Mirana. Hookshot in will kill off the Ogre Magi, however. The Rocket Flare, of all things, kills off the Mirana. Now a Tornado, which will connect onto the Skyrath Mage, will disjoint the Magic Missile, but it doesn't matter because they get the kill anyway. That's four kills in favor of DD, and that Ravage was not the Ravage they needed. That was, I mean, a good Ravage, I suppose, on paper. But you need follow-up for that, and there was no follow-up to be had. Yeah, a three, even a five-man Ravage with no follow-up is still a pretty mediocre Ravage. Nagus Iron, in the meantime, has been farming as well. That secures themselves a Relic, and halfway towards that Radiance uh, Recipe goal, they're going to turn for a stun as well as work it onto him. He is going to immediately purge off that Ice Path stun as they clean up the Invoker on the sidelines, pulling back Aki. Storm just has to get out of there. There's not much left inside the tank to go for another kill. But now they got shot to Illusionist. They might be able to turn the Ice Path lands onto fucking mad, but they just don't have another way to bridge the gap. Illusionist is going to be just fine. Still, I think that's completely acceptable for DD. It is a really topsy-turvy game. Just every time the Ravage comes out, if it's good, then I don't want to fight. If it's less than good, it's going to go DD's favor. Yeah, and it's a, this time DD taking a tower off of that one as well. And Denial, they have yet to take... I mean, they have taken, like, one good fight that's almost completely on their terms, but so far we haven't really seen the classic team fight that you would expect from this type of lineup, where Storm Spirit just jumps in, and then he starts pulling someone, whereas everyone else just following up with a Ravage backup or anything like that. The team fights have been so freaking chaotic for both sides, and for Denial, I mean, they kind of have been... This screwed up mostly by the cogs of clockwork really so as long as they play around that they will be much better moving forward but right now dh he's farming for his relic and or farming for his radiance however he's already has the relic completed and i think even though it is a late radiance it's not possible to see this nagas iron just go off from this point yeah it really isn't right now she's sitting at about 5,000 gold behind the storm actually a little bit less than that um, either way, zip and pull up onto Aki up top with the Mystic Flare and the Orchid to amplify that all. It's going to be the end of Jakiro's life, and very easily to 
But yeah, Nagas Iron, she can just soak up all of the farm in the map that nobody's using. Invoker up towards top with the Clockwork inbound. I think they're going to find themselves a Skyrath Mage, if not a bigger fish to fry, in the form of fucking Matt. It's going to zip away, but very low on the mana. Cold snapped up. Orkin, he can do nothing but yield himself up in the air. But is that even going to work? They're not going to drop cogs as Masoki was silenced, but that's going to be a double kill for Nyasha as they mop up the Skyrath Mage as well. And DD, strike back and forth. There aren't many times when Storm Spirit's ball lightning and animation is what kills him off, but GD, they pretty much perfectly chain stun him with the likes of, wow, Raven in the bottom lane, really, onto Justin Yasha. Arrow will connect on a mass carry, but there's no follow-up here. Once again, Ravage, kind of subpar by Innocent. He, everyone else is going to try to back off. D-Tax should be, actually, no, chased down with another Tornado, and there's no real place for him to dodge. He's going to not crater this one. Innocent's going to jump right in, Anchor Smash into three, which will buy the Ogre a little bit more time. Ron is doing quite a bit of work, as well as Innocent's constant Anchor Smash. And Illusionist might be brought down in a one-for-one -one trade, but Illusionist is, or Innocent rather, is going to be dropped down, I think, as well. Paris is going to leap into the trees and will be just fine. These are really terrible engagements for Denial. I don't know why you blink behind a tier 2 tower and blindly ravage, but Tidehunter seemed to think that that was a good idea, and spoiler alert, it wasn't. Maybe, just maybe, if they had like a really deep ward behind the tower and they spot out a perfect ravage with some follow-up by the storm, maybe they can get away with that, but storm died previously and wasn't anywhere close. And now DH has the Radiance completed, it's just been happily farming away. All this time, while Denial are running around and losing these scrappy engagements, Naga Siren's really the one to benefit. And this is actually not looking good for Denial for a couple of reasons. First of all, because of the fact that Naga Siren is benefiting, as you said, is going to be well on her way to the Boots of Travel. But also Denial, like, if they're messing up right now, this does not bode well for the rest of this game. And even for Game 3, they have to really just tighten up the screws and just not make these questionable plays let's say questionable to put it lightly um they don't really have late game in order to contest the naga siren as good as storm spirit and marana are they're no naga siren they're not medusa they're not specter they can't really contest if naga siren really gets off the ground and right now dd though it is not exactly what they would like to be they're still in a very comfortable position because denial they're not making any headway into these tier two towers and this is really what denial's draft is supposed to be doing they're supposed to be Aggressing early on and then just snowballing the Storm Spirit and Marana enough to the point in the fact where they could just A move into the enemy base. And clearly they're just not at that point and it doesn't look like they'll be at that point in this game pretty much ever. They're going to go for Aki. They'll take him out. But it's only one kill and they might actually lose a couple more. Magic Missile on the fucking map. Deafening Blast. Hookshot would push him out of the cogs but he gets double bumped and now he's going to be brought down. That Deafening Blast was actually pretty sweet with those level 4 cogs. A one-for-one -one trade that Denial should never be making. For sure. And it was a really awkward one, too. They saw Inyasha on the ground, and I believe that's what spurred them to use uh, the Murana Moonlight Shadow while he was running around at 522 movement speed. And then they decide to go for the Jakiro. Again, it's another really sketchy engagement. They got the Jakiro pick, but weren't able to make a clean retreat. The Storm Spirit doesn't have a Bloodstone. If he did, maybe he can get away with jumps like that, but it's actually going to be a Dagon build by the Storm. He'll have level 2 as soon as he respawns, but honestly, Denial need to be crushing now, and that's just not really where they're at. They do have a slight advantage, I suppose, at about 3,000 gold and 2,500 in experience, but it's not enough when you're dealing with DD, who are pretty much playing this game 4v5 and trading even at worst. And this Dagon build from the Storm Spirit is a very early game focused build. This is still consistent with Denial's original game plan, but I don't think should be the build that he's going for right now. Clearly, they're not going to end this game in a fast fashion. They might be able to get a couple of pickoffs with that Dagon on the Storm Spirit, but Denial, they really should be looking towards late game and really trying to play around that. You know, Russia Refresh Orb on Tidehunter. Innocent is going to be going for that item so he could land two subpar Ravages instead of just one. Uh, it's not really the build that I would expect from the Storm Spirit in this game. He needs to be going for a Sheep Stick or a BKB or something to help him fight. He might find Illusionist here, and he will. Look at that. Nice little Vengeful Spirit in a cage. And Illusionist is going to get bailed out by Yule Scepter for a little bit. Ice Path going to buy him a little bit of time. Mystic Clare completely whiffing. But he swapped himself right in. It's actually going to set up for Cryo to get hook shot. Innocent's right in the, there with him, though. And Cryo gets four staffed out. Innocent, though, sitting in the Macro Pyre, just burning. Now's the time for Ravage. If there is one at all, he's going to back off. His fucking Mad is going to get cold snapped. Yule Scepter will probably not save him. There's the Ravage finally in time. But the... Yes, it will crater off the Storm Spirit as the Tornado does finish him off. And once again, Denial's Ravage just a little bit too late. Like, by the time it was already out, Storm Spirit was dead.
They're looking for a little bit more on the sidelines, but that little more is already retreated back to base. His Cryo Jade is going to be safe. Um, but yeah, it just really feels like Denial aren't playing at full capacity. Just a lot of subpar engagements, the Ravages in particular, and I think in that last fight, Tide Hunter Force Staffed a creep, if I'm not mistaken. The Force Staff was used on a creep. I'm not sure whose it was, but um, just based on the positioning and him sitting in the macro pyre, I think it was the Tide Hunters. That's never really where you want to be as any hero. Macro pyre does do a lot of damage if you can't move out of it. Illusionist also going to find d at the exact same time. He does have to worry about a Marana arrow coming in, which will miss. Marana's arrows has not been free-handing, but 3x multicast, d tax and look to turn things around. Illusionist, one more arrow will kill him off, but it's a trade of the Ogre Magi. Thank you to one for one. Naga Siren, very happy to take that kill, and she'll be able to work that farm a lot better than the Marana. This is not looking good for Denial. These trades are usually good, assuming their draft, assuming even drafts, but with DD, with so much late game slant with the Naga Siren, these trades, especially the kills going on to the Naga Siren, are working out so much better for them. And Denial, outside of double Ravage or you know, a good Ravage and a massive team fight, there's not much they could do to explosively recover into this game. Yeah, there really isn't. This Naga Siren, after being about 5,000, 4,000 gold behind the Storm Spirit, is now. Only about a thousand or so, a little bit more than that, but still looking good and getting back to this game very quickly in the clockwork. Going to be going for a Necrobook build up towards the top, and Yasha has spotted eyes on the Paris. But it looks like he's decided not to go for the Marana, at least for now, as Yasha is going to pull out. But this is exactly how you want to be playing your Quaswax Invokers at this point in the game. Just be running around inside the Ghost Walk almost 100% of the time and more or less play it like a Clinks. And he's going to think about going fucking mad, but this is a trap. He knows that Paris is here, and he does have a lot of backup. Clockwork, hookshot, not going to be thrown just yet. Macropyre is there to thin the creep wave, so they don't have to worry about that. But they're going to jump in straight towards Aki. Hookshot in, It's that was not the right hookshot target. Now Tornado is going to be hitting onto absolutely everyone. And Nausea will not kill off Cryo. And will be Moonlight Shadow out. Paris and company going to be retreating. Cryo still alive for now. It's just a kill on the Jakiro. And I think Denial will have to be pretty thankful that they didn't lose any heroes in that engagement, because that could have been really bad. Yep. That does take do Denial most of their heroes to fight inside that engagement, and the Naga Siren is always getting something during this time. However, Blanc upon Ravage onto DH. It's already backup, however. They need the arrow to land, and I just don't think that's going to happen. Song disengaged from Naga Siren. Again, Innocent going to find Ravage that just doesn't really do much. Alright, I'm going to call it right now, Innocent. You probably should not be playing Tidehunter if there is a game number three, because the Ravages have been... Like, have there been any good Ravages in the jungle fight in the Radiant? That was good. Everything else has just been either without any follow-up or too late. So I guess that does kind of mean without follow-up. So this Tide Hunter just really has to get a better idea of where his teammates actually are, because the Ravages have not been good, and this is not a spell that you could afford to whiff. Like, Ball Lightning, if you mess up a little bit, yeah, you could fine-tune it, you'll be fine. But Ravage, no, you don't have that luxury. Inuyasha is gonna get jumped by fucking Mad. Fucking Mad, very low on mana, however, and Mascara is going to bail him out. Gush, dodged by the Yule Scepter. Now Yule Scepter onto the Tide Hunter. Mascara's Mage will kill off the Invoker in the end. Cryo also in a little bit of trouble right now. Looks like it'll be a clean retreat for everyone else on the Denial side. Once again, they're lucky to get out of there alive. Illusionist is going to TP out of that, and he will be fine as well. So it's just a clean kill on the Invoker in Denial. They all escape successfully. Innocent for staffing into Cogs. That is not how that works. I mean, we seem to be really harsh on this Tide Hunter, but Denial, they definitely need to tighten up the screws. In some form or fashion, they go very deep onto DH. This time, with no song available, he's going to get sold up by fucking Mad. This is the pickoff that they desperately needed, and they need to keep on getting it. Although it's annoying to die as an Naga Siren, the bigger issue is that you're not farming for a minute. That minute would have been Naga Siren's Manta style, or very darn close to it. And they also have an Aghanim Scepter quietly farmed up by the Ogre Magi. It's not a super fast Aghanim Scepter by any means, but for the support, it's definitely respectable. And DTX has been getting a decent amount of Radiant's multicast, so maybe they have enough power hand. to tide them over in this game, but they just need to keep up this aggression, make sure they look for these kills, zip away from fucking Matt, going to find himself... Hmm. A bounty weren't going to pop that immediately. And presumably just go all the way back towards this jungle. Was the Naga Siren at full HP when Storm Spirit jumped in? I think about 70%, maybe a little bit more. Alright, so fucking mad. Almost capable of 100 zeroing the Naga Siren is going to be going for a sheep stick, so he has a little bit more time. If there was backup there for DD, and so far there has been, like in all these fights, there's been either a tornado or a hookshot coming in as backup. 
then Storm Spirit is going to fall short a little bit in the next time. It's kind of weird to see a level 2 Dagon into an ultimate orb. Usually if you get a Dagon, it's level 1 and then items, or level 5 and then items. Level 2 and then items is not really seen, but uh, it is just enough to get a kill on the Naga Siren. And if he does find her out once again, maybe it's going to be enough to kill her off again. Uh, I don't know, Denial, they're packing a Ravage, so they're feeling pretty comfortable to roam around the map as a five-man squad. But every single second that passes is more farm for the Naga Siren, and she's going to be very close to her Mantis style if she wants to grab that one, or just go straight up for a heart. I think Mantis style is going to be the choice for DH, and she's going to get to that you know pure Naga Siren status right now. And as far as clearing for Denial, they're kind of limited. I think this is probably a game where Paris is going to have to consider a Maelstrom. Yeah, I think so as well. Even after going for the Diffusal and the Manta, Denial, I think their best wave player is probably the Storm Spirit in all honesty, but they're going to have to deal with a lot of units, especially now with the Necronomicon 3 picked up by the Clockwork. It's not the most traditional of items, but I quite like it coming out from this clock. If you're able to find the farm, it's always nice to have one in your team just for the aura, and they can use that to push up high ground a lot easier, kind of making up for the fact that Naga Siren's doing less damage to his towers. And if you somehow just find a one-man cog with just you and the other guy, then those Necro units are going to be doing so much damage. They're also going to catch the Tidehunter down towards bottom, four staff out, and then swap back denying all of it. Ravage out of panic, going to connect onto four, but there's once again literally no follow-up. Illusionist might be in a little trouble. Detax, though, gets caught in the ice path. Arrow will also miss. Ravage is down the tubes, though it is refreshable. There's a song to catch everyone who's invisible. They do have a level 3 Necro Book though, so they see everyone. Ice Path onto Paris. Do they have enough first damage for this Murana? They probably do. Secondary Ravage, not gonna bail out Paris, because he's still sitting in the Macro Pyre. will go down. That's three down instantly for Denial. Detach gonna be the fourth one to fall. Storm Spirit didn't teleport into that? I mean, it wasn't really the best fight, I suppose. He actually just didn't have a TP scroll, so it's a four for nil in favor of DD. Carry a TP. I think there's not much else that you can talk about there. If Storm Spirit was there, it probably would have been easy cleanup on three, but it's going to be a four for nil trade. And that was after the Refresher being used by the Tidehunter. I thought that would be a much better turn. That Ravage was okay, but Storm Spirit's the follow-up that they desperately needed. Really nice setup coming out from DD with that Necrobook, as well as the Song of Siren. We'll transition that into a tier two tower, as well as some high ground pressure here. It's not going to be with the Naga Siren, she's out yes, pushing top and a little too low to actually tower. join the fray. Them but that's your Mantis style completed and almost Reaver money. It's really scary. Denial, they can't be taking fights like this. Even though the Storm Spirit and Rana have a decent amount of net worth, it's not really translating into anything super tangible. Mantis style Diffusal Blade is nice for Mirana, but it's not as nice as having a Manta Radiance on your Naga. Yeah, I don't think Denial have actually been... They, they haven't actually fought as a five-man team for the entire game. Like, if Storm Spirit was there, as you said, most likely three kills at the very least. Who knows? That would have even, would have likely saved some of his allies in the process. So, fucking mad with no TP scroll. I mean, it did look kind of grim once they got caught by the Song of the Siren, so his decision to not TP is understandable. They're going to catch Inuyasha here, but fucking mad gets cogged up. He's going to ball ending out of that immediately, but Inuyasha take a couple of fire blasts, just one, no multicast yet from DTAC, so that's a nice, Deafening Blast, but it will not be enough to save his life as Cryo is on the run from Necro Units. Ball ending out from the Storm Spirit. They're going to turn things around with now Paris is joining the fray. Cogs are there, though. Purge onto Mass Carry. In the meantime, Jakiro does finish off the Ogre Magi. There is also a Venge here. Arrow going to fly into Aki. They have to worry about the Naga Siren now, and they will all get caught. That's two. Ice Path set up only onto Paris. No, no, only on fucking Mad, actually. They'll take the Storm Spirit down in a hurry. Paris has another leap out, and he will make it out alive. Innocence with no ravages cannot provide any backup and DD they turn things around after only losing their invoker They take down the storm spirit and the ogre both and They will maybe go for a mid lane tower push or just start strangling the denial side of resources with the naga siren Either way, it's a nice little win for DD. Yeah, why not both? They'll use the liquid fire to push down the 2-2 two -two tower and naga siren illusions to push down bottom and top lane is being pushed in by rocket players And if they really want to they could probably send a naga illusion there to top it all off that is your Reaver money for DH, and right now DD are pretty much hitting critical mass. Naga yeah, Siren's broken even with the Storm Spirit's farm, and has hit full Naga Siren's Bookbush territory, where she kind of runs the map. And that's never really going to change. Denial, or it feels, just going to be slowly strangled to death unless they can get a perfect team fight. And that perfect team fight is going to be possible in 17 seconds when the Refresh Orb is back online for the Tidehunter. Uh, this is actually the first Naga Siren game I've seen in the new patch, so 
I don't know exactly how much this uh, illusion nerf is going to be hitting her. It doesn't seem like it's going to matter that much since Naga Siren, though she does do a little bit of chip damage every now and again. It's really the fact that Denial will have nowhere to move because there are Naga Sirens pushing the waves everywhere. So I think it's still fine for Naga Siren in that regard. And she is now on top of the net worth chart. Where is all her money? It's going to be a Reaver for DH and is a little bit short of the full heart. But either way, she's pushing bottom lane. So even if these and mid lane. So even if the illusions don't actually do any damage to the towers, the creeps will do it. So DD, they have a lot more room now to just walk around and do whatever the hell they want. And what they want to do right now is use the gem on Jakiro to take complete map control. Right now, Denial, they're 100% or er, almost 100% blind. They just put down an Observer Ward. Jakiro is actually quite a bit more farm than I thought he would. He's getting dangerously close to his scythe, both the Mystic Staff and the Void Stone inside the courier. Just 1500 gold or so until he has that completed. And it's going to be completely a surprise to Denial. Although they have a Lincoln Spirit of the Storm Spirit, and it's kind of nice to avoid the uh, jump swings. Sight the Bice, they have Yule Scepter and plenty of ways to pop that Lincoln. Roshan is going to be attempted by Denial, and it looks like this isn't going to be spotted out by DD in the slightest. They smoke into it and zip into the pit, leap from the Marana. That leap might have just been spotted out. No, looks like he was just out of vision from that Observe reward. And that is going to be Roshan. Presumably for fucking that, as well as the Moonlight Shadow being used. So it's a move that Denial are going to get away with, and a pretty good one at that. Long zip in, pulling him in onto some illusions. That Invoker illusion didn't know what hit him. Was the real Invoker is all the way back at his tier 2. Well, still a nice little win for Denial. Unfortunately, their Tidehunter Ogre a little bit beaten up after that Roshan, but now with an Aegis and two Ravages, man, Denial, they can certainly take a nice team fight, even though Naga Siren is at this point, you know, completely full on Naga Siren status. So uh, for Denial, maybe they just have enough brute force to just, you know, bust their way through. Their Murana, though, is not going to be able to. You know, really contribute all that much. The Fusal Blade Mantis style build is fine, but uh, eventually it's not exactly what you want on a six slotted carry hero. So, Denial, they should be looking to play this very aggressively now that they do have the double life. I don't know what their objective is going to be, but it should be just some of these tier two towers or any one of these tier two towers. Try to force a fight. Yeah, it really feels like they're kind of at their peak almost. They have a level three Dagon now on the Storm Spirit. If I'm not mistaken, that's what's being sent out now. The heart is up for the Naga Siren, but I think if Denial are going to win this game, they at the very least need to take two tier twos with this Aegis and maybe even pressure high ground. Long zipping in mid. They found themselves real invoker this time around. It will be ravaged only onto him. They have the refresher for the secondary ravage. The Song of Siren comes out to help that invoker. He's going to avoid the orchid damage with the old scepter. Macrobar bouncing back. And this he can't get off the second ravage. He's going to die with all his mana burned down the drain. Fucking mad is also drained of his mana, but does have the age to come back up. He's currently surrounded by a handful of Naga Illusions as well as the Necrobook army. Ice pat down. Fucking mad's going to lose his life. And that's Denial losing three heroes when they really needed to win a fight. DD. They're starting to run away with this game. Tornado, <laughs> it's hunting, but Ogre was a little to the left. So I don't think he, the Tidehunter was even hit by the uh, EMP there. He was just used as Ravage Refresher, and then at that point, most Tidehunters are close to out of mana already. Got hit by the Cogs, and that's what burned him out. So no double Ravage, which could have been amazing. The secondary Ravage would have hit five heroes and would have probably cleaned up everyone on DD. But unfortunately, once again, Denial, they fought a fight without their full squad. Marana did zero damage during that entire fight. She was not close enough to really contribute. And I don't know why Denial keep doing it, but it's not doing them any favors. With Storm Spirit down for 45, DH, Inuyasha, they're going to lay into the Raxxas. d tax going to throw a couple Fire Blasts here and there. Paris going to get Hookshot immediately when he tries to go for DH. Pops the BKB, tries to turn things around, doing some pretty good damage to Mascari, but not enough. Like, this Murana doesn't feel like a Murana with the amount of net worth she has, a 20k net worth. The Rax is going to survive, but they just need one more person to just get in there for one more hit. Okay, well, the Rax are going to survive for now, so Denial, not as bad as it could have been. But still, it's another really messy fight by them. Nagasar and Illusions eventually are going to take this barracks. I don't think there's much to stop it. They're going to try to kill these Illusions as fast as possible. At the very least, they're stopping the regen on these barracks. It's been dropped down to 50 twice. Each of those swings from Nagasar and Illusions says about 10. They throw a Forge Spirit. They just need to do that one more time and they'll be able to take it. Um, but yeah, I don't count on those melee barracks standing for much longer. DH finds himself an Illusion Rune and now 2000 gold on top of his completed part. Yeah, I don't know. Those cogs have really been on point throughout the entire game from the clockwork. Mascari definitely has um, impressed me. He secondarily maxed him, if I'm not mistaken, but they've really been on point. 
Yeah, he had two points of cogs with zero points from Rocket Flare. I didn't take a look at his leveling progression after that, but uh, yeah, it might have just been maxed out. And when you're already with an invoker, mana drain, as long as you're not completely draining them out, just loves more mana drain. So denial, they're working with less than ideal mana pool situations and Clockwork has been doing a good amount of work in this game. Mass carry in this game and also in the last game as the Timber saw, uh, really displaying a good amount of skill with the heroes that he's been playing. So DD, they no longer have to worry about this Aegis of Denial. They have a lot more freedom to move around. They will have to worry about a double Ravage, but if they keep managing the Tidehunter's mana as they have been, man, they don't have to worry about a damn thing. Daedalus on Marana, that's going to help her do some damage, but is going to pale in comparison to the amount of damage she's going to be receiving. For sure. Naga Siren also going to be working into some pretty major damage too. With the Butterfly or Diffuse the Blade, I'm not sure it matters really which one she gets. The extra mana bird from Diffuse might be nice. I think Butterfly is probably just the better bet, but still, this Naga Siren is going to be looking and more than just the Radiance Burn as it has been up until this point. And, uh, well, if she does go for a Diffuse Blade, even more mana burn towards Denial. Uh, it's not really the most classic way of dealing with the Tidehunter Double Ravage, but if you somehow manage to make it happen between EMP, Cogs, and a Diffusal Blade, well then, most of Denial's team fighting is down the tube, so... I think, as you said, it is more likely that it's going to be a Butterfly, just because it's a bigger item, and well, she's gonna get jumped right now, DH up towards top, I can mad, let's see how much damage she can do, Dagon's going to fly, DH, gonna get the song out! She has a heart, like, I think Denial has to respect that, and now they have a huge setup for an EMP, it's not going to hit onto anyone because they're all invulnerable. Fucking Mad's still going to take a very quick fall. He's going to fall right back into a Magpire. Will drop as well as the Ogre at the exact same time. TP out from the Mirana and Cryo. Blink forward from Illusionist. There's a swap available. Magic Missile or neither. Cryo is going to be fine for now. Trying to TP out. We'll make it out. No. We'll get Yules. Now he's just dead. Cryo is going to fall. And even with really terrible uh, coordination from DD, they just have so much power that they're able to crush Denial. Even with missing a Deafening Blast, an EMP, and uh, I believe there was also one more missed deal there. Uh, I think a Hookshot, but either way, they clean house, and they're also going to catch Whoa. DH. Oh, DH actually going to get caught. He has backup in the form of Mass Carry. Can the Naga Siren run away fast enough? The answer is looking to be yes. Paris has an arrow. If this arrow lands, then maybe kill. But in the meantime, Innocent's getting his face smashed in by Mass Carry. And the blink forward for a purge, but another song of the siren. And now Paris is in a lot of trouble because he just used leap. Has Manta Style and Diffusal. He's gonna have to use it to get out from under Mass Carry. There's one Manta Style. And the net is going to cancel anything else. Turn around for something. Paris is gonna fight to the death, but his death is incoming fast. And that is more and more kills going the way of DD. They're gonna barrel down the bottom lane or top lane or wherever they really want. And denial they have to buy back on their Tide Hunter. Maybe if they want to defend this, or they're just going to sacrifice one, probably two sets of Raxes. Yeah, it really feels swamp. like it. The silver lining is the Naga Siren is going all the way back to base, and she is completely tapped out of mana, and is hitting on quite a lot of gold. But with boots of travel, Didn't that's pretty much it. Creeps pushing up top and mid lane. The other heroes have taken that barracks in its entirety. They lose the bench, but now it looks like they're going to take even more. The Ogre and the Skyrath manage to fall after Massacre is able to bounce back the Ogre. They'll find fucking mad. Ice Path after the battery is solved. He's going to be tornadoed up and probably cratered down. He's going to be dropped up. You Scepter just delaying the inevitable. He's going to be able to make a long zip back to the base and fucking mad survives on double digits HP. But it doesn't save his base on strike. Ugh. A little bit off the mark. <laughs> fucking mad's gonna live. You're in your fountain, but you're still not Road safe. Small amounts of damage, of course, from the uh, rock flare and the sun strike. But you know what? DH with Puja Chat. Oh, wait. Huge zip in for fucking mad. Gonna bulldoze Jakiro. That's ending a monster kill streak. My god, that's. Put a lot of kills. Ravage gonna connect onto two, and Yasha blocking that all with his Ravage. Now the Song of the Siren. Fucking mad. And it's Song of the Siren just to retreat. Rax is gonna survive on the top lane and the bottom lane both. But still, Denial are facing a Rax disadvantage at this stage in the game, and they no longer have that one Ravage. Hell, they don't even have a single Ravage. I think DD can afford to just go back to their base, TP back, walk out, and then slow push another lane, knowing that there's no Ravage available. For sure. DH is also going to have a completed butterfly if he ever wants to send that out to himself. Currently sitting on 6,000 gold. He might be considering saving buyback, but at the very least, buy yourself an Eagle Song. You deserve it. Right now, DD are looking for just a smooth sailing game. Dagon 5 complete on fucking mad, but that's not the item they need. I don't know, it just feels like they need a lot more than just a little bit more nuke damage. The hard on Naga Siren just isn't going to ever give way. Even these illusions are really hard to deal with. When you're losing to two Naga Siren illusions, you know that you're in a little bit of trouble. 
this Dagon build would have been, I don't know, really good on the Storm Spirit if he had a really hard carry behind him. Uh, someone not Marana. Like, if he was the one, if it was swapped, if the Marana was Naga Siren instead, then the Dagon build would make a lot more sense. Because the point of Dagon, pretty much ever, is to, except for Tinker, is to just take an early game lead and buy a whole bunch of space with burst damage. It's not supposed to be a late game plan, even though it is such an expensive item. So you're protecting and providing a lot of pressure for a Marana. That's not going to win you any games. Marana, even though she may be six slotted, is going to lose versus a six slotted Naga Siren. We'll probably even lose to a six slotted Invoker. So this is a uh, not really what Denial want to be doing with the items and the draft they have. It just doesn't match up well. No. That said, if DD sit on this Naga Siren for too long, maybe they'll run to an issue where the Naga Siren gets capped out and can't really get anything more, but even then, I'm not sure Denial have enough heroes that really kills. scale. The big boosts in power for the sports have pretty much already been met. The Org Magi with his Aghanim Scepter and Skyrath Mage. Honestly, I don't think you're really getting much stronger ever, even with the Bloodstone Ags or what have you for Cryoj. It's just not going to come out at any decent time. And right now, DD, they maybe are just waiting for Roshan. It's going to be a rather long Roshan respawn for them, but all the while, Naga Siren is just split pushing literally everywhere. So, pretty much no matter where you go as Naga, you're going to be running into a couple of Naga Siren illusions, and not all their heroes are actually capable of handling those illusions very well. Top lane is being pushed in very aggressively. Bottom lane, Clockwork, just by himself, is providing a lot of pressure down there, but they're going to actually all head up towards top lane, not waiting for Roshan. This is probably the worst time for DD to be doing this, though I think they're far enough ahead that they could probably get away with it, especially if they run into Paris right now, and they will open up with the Hex. There's a blink forward for a stun. Paris needs some help right now. He's going to leap out, and he will be just fine. Fucking mad. Gonna try to go for any option in the meantime. Will not make that happen. Ravage can connect onto everyone. Another Ravage being armed up will be thrown. Will connect onto two as well. Paris with the BKB just right-clicking onto pretty much everyone. Nagus is also picked off in the meantime. He's going to be a two for zero so far. Mass carry in the back end. Trying to get a little bit closer to the fight. Will hookshot straight in to kill off the Marana. And now is forced to be on the retreat. Multicast onto Aki as Janile still working with a numerical advantage right now. Clockwork to Kiro just have to try to retreat. Fucking Mad completely out of mana. It's going to be Aki to fall as Fucking Mad losing even more mana to these cogs. Clockwork should be fine. But Denial, they take a massive team fight. Finally, their double ravage lines up. This time they actually have follow up. Would you look at that? It actually makes a difference. A lot of that had to do with DD also taking a really right subpar engagement, on. missing their hook shot, and just not able to connect onto anything. The BKB came out. Pretty late from the Invoker, I can't really blame him, a zipping in storm that's dagging you is going to chunk you down either way. But, yeah, he was already down to about 30% HP at the start of that fight and just wasn't able to accomplish much. He bounces into his back, but the EMP didn't drain enough mana, or didn't connect to what have you, so Innocent's able to get off that secondary Ravage. I believe that instantly killed off Naga, and if it didn't instantly kill her off, it was pretty darn close. Song wasn't able to come out there, and without those tools, DD have a hard time resetting and looking for those engagements. Had the hookshot landed, maybe it's a different fight, but very scrappy this time on DD's fault. Or if they just had a little bit more damage to instantly kill off the Marana within the duration of one hex, that could have been so much different from DD, but falling short, as you said, on one too many fronts in that fight, and ultimately Denial are the ones to win it. It's going to mean that they're going to be feeling a little bit better about themselves in this game, but still, without double Ravage, Stupendous. they are not going to be able to replicate that. It's just impossible. So it's going to be them 100% reliant on these Ravages. And, well, the next Ravage is going to be in 45, double Ravage in 90. And by that time, DD are going to be knocking on the front door of the Denial top lane. So here's the challenge. You just want a team fight with double Ravage. Can you do it with no Ravages? Because that seems a little bit more difficult. Nagasarn still has yet to pick up that butterfly. Honestly, I have no idea why he's not. Even if he picked up that butterfly, I think he'd still be able to um, have buyback guaranteed inside Trouble the next fight. But I don't know. I can respect if he did the math and it's not the case. Melee Barracks going to be chipped down by the illusions, but not heavily. The Dark Monocons are going to be doing quite a number on it, however. And that's Melee Barracks down to half. They're very little committed by DD. They just need to keep this up. Four times multicast on the Melee Necronomicon is going to end its life one way or another. Starfall from Paris. 
is going to do it in, but it continues. They're going to rules up the Tide Hunter. They have an Ice Path to follow up. Tornado going to bounce him up in the air into the EMP. Hookshot on the fucking mat. Fucking mat now going to be drained of his mana, but not enough. Able to zip out from this fight. However, the Melee Barracks not going to be so lucky. It's currently stationary. Silence on it. DH, they get the Ravage. They only have one to work with for this fight, but it's going to be enough to bring down the Vengeful Spirit. DH dropping low, not able to get the song up before he's pulled. And now he's going to drop down. Paris right clicking for all he's worth. Buyback from the Naga Siren. They get the Melee Barracks. Was that buyback really necessary? DH wants to get back in this fight. Wants to get some heals. Hookshot under the back lines, jams it in in the Skyrath Mage. DX going to be multicasted up by Datex, but not going to be enough to save his ogre's life. Four staff mine, however, is going to be dropped low to the creep. 66 HP. The creeps will not be able to do him in as he makes it back to the base. Fucking Mad wants to get back in this action and try to focus down the Nagas Iron Long Zip. And they found him refresher ravage onto DH. Hookshot into the illusions. And now they pull back DH. This might be a tie back from Naga Siren. Four staff going to be MVP for Naga as she's able to make it out of the fight. Tide Hunter not so lucky beyond God like Ramassa Carry dropping low and probably a little too enough to go for this. Fucking Mad going to jump back in. Lincoln Scepter going to be popped. Deafening Blast going to bounce him back and now Kenyasha possibly out away from his team a little too far. Buyback from the Clockwork. Wanting to get back in the song from DH going to save his life. Maybe that's the end of it. Massacre going to be defused up. He has a hookshot over to the Naga Siren. Four staff up to the high ground. Doesn't have TP. He used that to get into the fight. With hookshots galore, he should be able to make it out. But maybe I spoke too soon. They have Invis up. Going to pop that Necronomicon 3. And it looks like Massacre is out to save after all said and done, everyone uses buyback, or most people use buyback who have it. At least anyone who needs it uses it. And Denial, they don't even make a successful defense. They do a lot better than I thought they would do. So all credit to them. They managed to stall out for long enough to get a Ravage up online. Eventually, they do use the double, but they lose Raxes. So that's not good for them. Now two Raxes down and with, again, the same situation that we just had. It's going to be DD going down towards the bottom lane, knowing that there's no Ravage. Storm Spirit going to look to pick off DH beforehand, though. But this Storm Spirit just doesn't have enough mana or uh, damage to do this. He's going to instead change his mind, go for the softer target in the ventral. At least he gets something. DH closing in fast, though. Song of the Siren? No, it's going to be a Hex from the Jakiro. Four Staff out from Paris. DH is going to get a little bit closer. Is he going to pop a song now? He sees three heroes, but he gets silenced immediately. It's going to be Cryo to get obliterated by the Siren. Mystic Flare doing next to nothing. And now they're going to chase forward for whoever else they could find. Won't be anyone substantial. So it's just going to be a one-for-one one trade, but Denial, they really need their Skyrath Mage. They need every single person, whereas DD, they don't really need their Adventure Spirit. This swap and stun, they're nice, but you could work around that. Yeah. Especially if they catch fucking Mad right now. Oh dear. Fucking Mad, shot. hook shot in, hexed up. I think he's just dead. And fucking Mad does not have buyback. Already used it in the last fight, and DD might have just secured this game number two. If the third lane of Barracks goes down, I don't think there's really any hope for Denial. Maybe a Hail Mary push, and if they kill everybody on DD twice, they can do it? I suppose the Naga Siren doesn't have buyback, but this melee Barracks on bottom, at the very least, going to die. Hook shot on the back lines. They found D-Tax, going to be forced out of the cogs. He's going to burn his mana, and now Innocent going to be dropped. Not a single Ravage is going to use this fight, because he just doesn't have the cooldown. Disconnect from fucking Mad, it's going to be GG called, and we're going to a game three. I just realized that this game was actually 57 minutes long, so we got two hour long games and it is going to culminate into hopefully not another hour long game, but who knows what's going to happen. Uh, Denial, they have to try something different. I don't think this is the type of strategy that they could really run with. It's very delicate, very hard to get right, and Donkey Dota just had so much more going for them. They had a lot more room for error, but it didn't even seem like they needed it.